Today, I want to talk about two widely known enemies, the mob and the FBI. But to put it in proper perspective, they're more adversaries than enemies. The mob's objective is to make money via whatever means possible. And the FBI's job description is to prevent the mob from operating illegally. Years ago, it seems that the mob had the advantage, which if you think about it, that's pretty impressive, since the mob had less members, yet managed to outmaneuver the United States government. Granted, the tools or weapons which the FBI had to combat the mob was limited. And despite our government's power, the mob at one time was extremely powerful. One of the advantages the FBI has over the mob is education. In order to apply to be an FBI agent, I believe they need at a minimum to possess a bachelor's degree. Conversely, a high percentage of members of the mob are dropouts with little education. Nonetheless, by no means does that equate to them being stupid. There are many highly intelligent guys in that life, especially when it comes to running businesses, etc. Some of the agents are also trained in behavioral analysis, psychology, and behavioral science. And profiling plays a major part in what they do. For example, an agent with profiling experience can study a crew and its associates and zero in on who's the weak link. One of the agents that I met was a former school teacher before joining the FBI, and he had the knack of getting wise guys to talk to him, so much so that they made it his job. He said one time he rang a particular guy's bell, and the guy told him to meet him elsewhere because he didn't want to speak in front of his wife, but he did speak to him. This same agent would wire up his saucers with multiple microphones, just in case one malfunctioned. Years ago, the FBI had a dress code, which consisted of a dark suit, a white shirt, and a dark tie. Naturally, this attire made the agent stick out and easy to spot. However, following J. Edgar Hoover's death, each field office would set their own rules. And depending on which squad an agent worked on, that squad's supervisor would set the attire rule. Many of the agents work in OC switched to regular street clothes, which made them blend in better. But any knowledgeable wise guy can spot an agent a mile away, no matter what they're wearing. And the same goes for agents sniffing out a wise guy. Let's say there's a certain restaurant that wise guys frequent. Instead of sending male agents into the restaurant, they'll send in a male and female agent or two female agents to do surveillance. Female agents, and there are many, play integral roles in fighting the mob. I've seen some female agents that would be difficult to peg. Even the cars the agents drive are much different from those of years ago, although a telltale sign is their blacked out windows. Phones will always be the enemy of the wise guy. Years ago, the agents would tap a house phone or the phone in a club. But being everyone has a cell phone today, it makes their job that much easier not only to listen to conversations, but to track incoming and outgoing calls and text. Cell phones even expose your location. In my opinion, talking on the phone is the biggest repeated mistake guys make. Many foolishly believe that a burner phone gives them the security they need to communicate with one another. The FBI only needs the IMEI and MEID numbers to track and monitor a phone. During my time, I tried my best to be conscious of what I said on the phone. And nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. But no matter how much I limited what I said, guys would just speak freely. Out of all the guys I spoke to, Anthony Guzzo was the worst guy on the phone. He would say the craziest things. And after saying something damaging and realizing I became quiet, he would make matters worse by trying to cover up whatever he said earlier. Anthony's got to be someone the FBI loves listening to. If they bug Anthony's house, just by what he tells his wife alone, half the mob will be locked up. Another mistake guys repeatedly make is talking in the car. One day I had to meet with Paolo Loduca over loan shark money. I met him out east on Long Island at a gas station. It was winter time. And when I pulled up, I put my phone away and got out of my car. But he wasn't getting out of his. I seen him wave me over to his car. He rolled the window down and told me to get in. So I get in his car and he immediately starts talking. The whole time I'm thinking, this guy's going to get us both pinched because he don't want to talk outside because it's too cold. The FBI is fully aware that greed is the mob's weakness. And knowing this, they utilize their sources, which I'll get more into in a moment, and supply these sources, or an undercover, with whatever it is that equates to dollar signs to wise guys. While in the street, there were several times, had I been greedy and not cautious, I would have gotten jammed up. One of those times, I was offered 5000 a week, 
but passed because I felt it was a setup and also drugs were involved. And I can't tell you how many of my former friends would have never passed up that opportunity to put an extra 5000 in their pocket. While in the loan sharking business, I passed on numerous potential customers. For instance, one guy offered to pay above whatever VIG I would have charged him, typically music to a loan shark's ears. But my ears only heard alarms. The FBI has unlimited resources and funding. Of course, they have budgets. But in the name of fighting organized crime, they're pretty well funded. Organized crime squads minimized since 9-11. But from what I personally witnessed, dealing with C-17, the Lucchese squad, was a number of agents, a senior agent, a supervisor, and members of the NYPD, who are also members of the squad. And let me add, these people are always working. And most of them are well-versed on the mob and its lingo. They have no shortage of surveillance photos, which one person in particular is assigned to taking. Without question, the greatest weapon the FBI has on the mob is the mob itself. And what I mean by that is the sources and informants, either members or associates. These are the people who fill in all the blanks. As I'm speaking to you right now, every family has both informants and sources. And as I've mentioned in the past and was told by the FBI, they have the most intel coming from the Lucchese family, my former family. Off the top of my head, I know of five people who are active FBI sources. One's a Gambino associate who lives in Staten Island, who's been supplying the FBI information for almost 20 years. Another is a Colombo associate. And the last three are two Lucchese associates and one member. Of course, while I was in a life, I didn't know any of this, although I suspected all of the above except one. These sources represent the FBI's eyes and ears and give real-time updates on what the mob's up to. For example, if the Lucchese family inducts two guys or changes an administration member, the FBI usually will know before most members of the family. Another example, let's say the address of a government witness becomes known, and in turn, that family has people laying on the guy. Because the FBI has such high-level sources, they're privy to this information. It's the government's most crucial weapon. Think about it. You have these guys giving real-time intel and cases are being made, but they'll never be called to testify or be used as a witness as not to expose their identities. And they continue to do what they've been doing, supplying information. Before I mention the Super Thanks icon, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. That icon can be found in the three-dot dropdown and thank you. In a nutshell, what the FBI can count on is members of the mob never learning from past mistakes. History has proven they repeatedly make the same mistakes and errors in judgment over and over. In that life, you can't be so blinded with greed that you fail to see the hole in the ground that either you or many other guys fell into in the past. As I stated, the mob is out there trying to scheme and make money. Everything in their world revolves around making a dollar. Were there guys that I met in life who weren't greedy? Yes, but a high percentage are nothing but greedy. So while these guys day in and day out are occupied trying to make money, the agents are playing their favorite childhood game, cops and robbers. Except now, it's no longer a fantasy. It's reality. And they love nothing more than catching the bad guys, which they always eventually do. Mm -hmm.